One of the things that confuse people quite often is setting scanner resolution. I hope with this video tutorial that I can hopefully clarify that and help you understand better what to set your scanner for. All right, let's say that we are going to do some scans. One of the first things that we are going to need to decide is the desired output. So what is our finished scan going to be used for? And typically we have a couple choices. They're going to be for print. And so we're looking for some type of hard copy output. Or we're looking for some on-screen type of display. That might be for the web. That could be for a PowerPoint presentation, anything that involves displaying it on a computer screen, a projector, something along that line. It's not going to be printed as hard copy. Let's deal first with the on screen, because I believe, in my opinion, that's one of the easier ones to do, but yet one of the ones that probably confuse people most often. The basic rule for setting your scanner when you are going to do for on screen is set to resolution and this is going to seem a little strange here as what I say what to set it to but set the resolution to whatever works there is no ideal or magic number for example, people say, well, whenever you're scanning for the web, you should be scanning at 72 samples per inch, or maybe they'll say 96 or even 100 samples per inch. That will sometimes work, but I'll show you why this is not always correct. In fact, in 99% of the cases, it will probably not be correct. And I'll also explain to you where these numbers have come from. So we need to set it to whatever will work. Well, what works? Well, we have to look at a couple of things. We need to consider the size of our original. We need to be aware of the limitations associated with our original. In some other tutorials, I've talked about that this is a photographic print that typically we are limited to about 240 samples per inch maybe up to 300. If this were negative, has a lot more detail, we could set it up to 3000. But again, those are the maximum resolutions. What we need to always be concerned with is, if this is my original, I need to be concerned with if I'm going to do it for on screen, what is my on screen size that I'm trying to get to? On screen, sizes are always measured in pixels. So we need to know what size I want this to be on screen. Is it going to be 100 by 175 pixels? Is it going to be 1000 by 1750 pixels? Is it going to be something else? The resolution at which we scan this will determine what size our finished piece will be. Let's say in this example here that my original is, let's make it 1 inch by 1.75 inches. We measure print documents, print items in typically inches. Now let's say that I want this for on-screen purposes to be set at 100 by 175. So what would I set my resolution to in that case? Well, it works out nicely. I've done that intentionally. My resolution would be 100 samples per inch because if I've got one inch wide and I've got 100 samples per inch, that's going to give me 100. If I've got 1.75 inches at 100 samples per inch, that's going to give me 175 pixels. Now let's take that same original and say that we want it to be a thousand by seventeen hundred and fifty pixels. Well, same original, but it would need to be set to one thousand 
samples per inch in order to get my 1000 by 1750. So in this particular example, you can see that with a particular original, the resolution I set my scanner to in order to get my desired on-screen size is going to be dependent on the size of the original and my finished size. There is no magic number. Now also remember, if this were a color print and I want it to be on screen at 1000 by 1750 pixels, this wouldn't work because I'm at 1000. This print will be maxed out at around 240 to 300 samples per inch. So it would not be appropriate if I want to get a quality image to be trying to scan this at 1000 uh, samples per inch. Now maybe this is a photographic negative. Photographic negatives have a lot of detail. I could very easily scan at 1000. So you always have to be thinking about your original. So you can see there is no magic number associated with on screen. So where does this 7296 100 come from? When you scan something at around those numbers, when you then go to display it on screen, it typically will display what appears to be at the same size as the original. But again, it depends what the on-screen size needs to be. All right, so when we are scanning for on-screen, we simply set the resolution to what works. You know, we have to look at the size of the original. We have to see where we're going. Some scanning software, when you set the resolution and you have your scan area selected, you'll actually see the size in pixels that it's going to end up being. And you can then adjust before you actually do the scan to see what that size is going to end up being. All right, let's then move on and look at images that are going to be used for print. So now we're talking about print as our output. If we're looking at photographic types of images, photographs, when we go to print them, are done using what are called halftones. If this were going to even a laser printer, whether it's color or monochrome, the laser printer has certain colors. It places dots uh, next to each other of these different colors to give us the illusion of another color. Same thing in your textbooks, in any book that has a photograph. They're not using 16 million different colors. They're using a half tone and by placing colored dots in proximity to each other, they're producing this illusion of these different colors. But they've only used, in printing that book, four different colors. So when we are taking photos and we want to use those for print purposes, we are typically then using a halftone screen. And those screens are measured in lines per inch, LPI. And we would need to know how many lines per inch our final screen is going to have. That would come from the printer, or if we're making that decision, obviously we would choose that. But as that LPI increases, there is going to be more detail in the image. So that quality of that image is also going to end up going up. So your newspapers, we don't have high quality images in newspapers. So they're going to have a lower LPI and there are therefore lower quality. High quality magazines where they have very nice glossy photos, those have a very high LPI because they want a very high quality reproduction of that image. So when we have color photographs, typically then the resolution for a color photograph going to be duplicated using halftones. We take two times the LPI. So if we're going to use a screen that has, for an example, 133 lines per inch. We would multiply that by 2. Our resolution then would be 266 samples per inch. And here we're assuming no reduction or enlargement. We're looking at a 1 to 1 here. Again, we would have to be aware that if what we're doing is scanning a photograph, 
and trying to reproduce it using a halftone that that color print has certain limitations that's why magazines they don't scan the photographs those are copies of the original the originals are the negatives so they would be using a ideally a large format uh, negative in order to scan in order to get a very high quality photograph in the case of a black and white photograph negative we would be going one and a half times the LPI of the halftone screen that's going to be used all right so for print uh, using halftones the color is two times the LPI for black and white it's one and a half times the LPI now in some other cases we may have things that are non photographic in nature that we're going to try to reproduce so line art we're talking about an original line art hand-drawn line art we're going to typically want to keep that fairly high and that's going to depend on the printer as well uh, but typically again we're going to be looking at something relatively high probably in the neighborhood of 12 samples per inch and up that's going to depend upon the medium that's being used are we using pen and ink our substrate that we're um, producing this on in order then to capture all of that detail the resolution of the scan would be relatively high now this can make for large file size but typically with line art that's either black and white uh, or very limited palette of colors so the uh, bit depth would also be lower and so the file size would end up not being extremely large as well all right uh, so that concludes on how to set your scanner for basically on-screen display of images or images that are going to be used for print